mission was to, among other things, bring access to government closer to the people. This was to ensure that Kenyans enjoy a relative ease in dealing with various government offices, more so to create a conducive environment for both private and public sector players. But two administrations later, eight years on, has devolution made it easy to do business? Are Kenyan businesses finding, easy, finding it easy to work with counties to create wealth and jobs as it were? This is the conversation we're having on the show this afternoon. I'm Yvonne Okwara Matole. First, here are the highlights. How easy is it to do business in the counties? Numerous taxations hurting traders across the counties. And in our weekly segment, Made in Kenya, locally made phone charging cables. We speak to Anthony Muthungu of Totosi Limited. All right, and before I get into the news of the day, take a look at my guests this afternoon who will be talking about doing business in counties. How has the situation improved over the years? We've got Prashna Shah, who's the CEO of One Stop Enterprise and also a member of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Also on the show this afternoon, we've got Hilary Onami, who's the chair of the Devolution Committee at the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, that is KEPSA. We'll be discussing that and much more, including hearing from you we're going to be getting some views from you around the country including my question of the day which I will get to in a moment but first let's take a look at some stories that are making headlines this afternoon in the world of business starting with Standard Chartered Bank that has posted an after-tax profit of 1.9 4.9 billion shillings for the first six months of the year the results represent a 51% rise when compared to 3.2 billion shillings posted in the first half of 2020. The lender attributes the performance to improved loan impairments and operating cost efficiencies. Loan loss provisions fell 61% to 638.5 million shillings as net interest income fell to 9.12 billion from 9.39 billion shillings. Elsewhere, the Serial Millers Association CMA has accused the Kenya Bureau of Standards, KEBS, of failing to follow due process over a statement warning the public from consuming 27 flower brands. They say this has resulted in loss of business and lower consumer confidence to them and their brands. The Millers said the regulator should have verified and validated results for each batch before going public with the warning. The CMA further says none of the listed firms has been contacted on why they are non-compliant. And finally, the Kenya Transporters Association has advised its members against crossing the border into South Sudan. In a statement, the association has cited increased insecurity along the Nimule Juba Highway that has seen drivers killed and trucks burned or vandalized. They have further requested that all transporters withdraw their services to South Sudan until security is guaranteed. So welcome to the program. Our conversation begins in just a moment, but we'd also like to hear from you who's watching us on the program today. And so we're asking you this question online. What has been your experience in doing business in the counties? What's been your experience in doing business in the counties? The hashtag to use is business now. Please do send us your tweets at Citizen TV Kenya at Yvonne Okwara, or you can send us a text message. The number is 22422. What's your experience in doing business in the counties? Let me make a distinction here. It's not doing business with counties. That's a conversation we've had before, but it's doing business in the counties. What's the taxation like? Um, what are the laws? Are you asked to pay cess in one county and in another? Do you feel like there's double taxation? So it's your experience about doing business in the counties. That's what we're looking for. The hashtag is business now. I'd love to take a look at your views as we continue with this live newscast. So let's get our conversation started with my guests this afternoon, Hilary Onami and Prashna Shah. Thank you so much both for coming. Um, let me begin with you, Prashna. You're um, you know, uh, in the manufacturing sector. You're running a business. So first of all, tell us what you do, and then we can get into what your experience has been like in doing the counties in which you operate. Thanks, Yvonne. So we run a manufacturing in agribusiness. We manufacture potato crisps, chevdas, uh, roast peanuts, etc. 
Uh, the company has been in existence for 40 years. I've taken over from running it from my parents 13 years ago. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a learning curve for us. As you know, as you see, business 13 years ago was different from what business is now. You know, when devolution started, we thought things would be easier, actually, that we would have access to counties a lot more simpler. Mm. But what actually happened was that it became a lot more difficult to transport goods across counties. It almost became like border stops. Um, I'll give you an example. We, so we source our potatoes, for example, out of Narok. So when they leave Narok, they hit Nevasha, they're asked to pay cess in, Nairo in Nevasha. They hit Nairobi, they're asked to pay cess in Nairobi. That's just increasing the price of our raw material considerably. Not to mention all the other harassment that happens along the way. You've got county of officers at every other stop. You've got police officers doing their stuff. So it has actually made you know a lot more um, cost effects on our business. And that cost is obviously translated and transferred to the cost of the final product and therefore to the consumer as well. Yeah, some of it we try and absorb, but some of it we can't absorb. Um, for example, we have kebs in Kenya, in Nairobi, mm -hmm. right, which is supposed to give you a standard mark for the entire country. However, county government also want their own food analysis done and you're paying for that too. So there is a lot of double taxation. You know, you go to county for one or three licenses, then you're going to NEMA for one, you're going to another one for another one. I wish everything was just under one roof. Right. I, th I think that is what event, that is at one point something that was supposed to have happened. Mm -hmm. We were meant to have a one-stop shop. I think that's why Huduma centers were also set up, isn't it? Absolutely. So, I, I mean, I think what's, what's striking from what you've said, it's, it feels like border stops. So, you know, in essence, while devolution was meant to, um, you know, take everything down to the grassroots, but it almost feels like you're dealing with separate governments which have separate laws, which have separate taxations. Um, Hillary, you know, from the perspective of, you know, you chair the devolution committee at the Kenya Private Sector Alliance. Is this also what a number of, of your members are saying? I mean, it's, it's so striking that we can say that in this country, um, where you're supposed to be able to do business anywhere, you're supposed to be able to live and settle anywhere. I mean, even for political purposes, you're supposed to be able to, to run for office in, you know, any, any part of the part. country. But it almost seems like there are 47 separate distinct governments. You're right, and uh, actually, Rosma just summarized what uh, the experience has been. And uh, <clears throat> first of all, allow me to say that devolution is uh, the best thing that has happened to Kenya so far. Uh, but um, as uh, businesses, as we had hoped, and we had really high hopes for, you know, um, doing business at the county level. And uh, <clears throat> that's the contrast that we are having, that whilst we are supposed to be, you know, we are getting into AFTAD and we are talking be regional yes. and Africa, mm -hmm. Africa wide, yet there are those non-trade barriers within our very, uh, our very own uh, locations. And um, we had hoped that, you know, uh, from uh, uh, the counties uh, we with the, the regional blocks will come and sort those kind of you know n n cross border uh, trade issues um, some are trying uh, let me uh, say for a fact mm -hmm. but uh, there's a lot to be to to be you know improved nine years or eight years down uh, devolution we expect so much uh, but as Rasma said uh, it is a true the story of says yeah. Is, is one that um, our, our members across board uh, keep saying. Yeah. Talk of uh, potatoes from Narok, talk yeah. of maize from, uh, you know, Transoya mm -hmm. all the way to Mombasa. You can imagine the number of counties you will have to pay CES right. all through. Right. And, so uh, is it only CES? Talk to us maybe about other issues that may have come up in your conversations of the devolution committee at KEPSA. Um, yeah. What are the other issues? Of course, CES, you know, when you're transporting, yeah. you know, raw materials from one uh, to, to the other, but maybe the other advertising. Uh -huh. Advertising is a critical element. Mm -hmm. When you brand How your so? car, yeah. you brand your car, and you have to, once it moves from uh, county X to X, you have to pay, you know, for advertising mm -hmm. um, across across the country. Uh, betting, there's uh, issues of licensing yeah. uh, that uh, actually licensing. Uh, it, it, across it's uh, across across mm -hmm. across, uh, across all specters of uh, of like of um, doing business here. Yeah. yeah, and and so um, so. Take me through the conversations that you're having at the devolution committee. Obviously, 
we can't, you know, be privy to everything that you discuss. But what is it that has preoccupied, uh, you know, your committee, you know, as the chair, when you take a look at how businesses are able to conduct, um, you know, conduct their trade? Because to be honest, not some businesses, you know, work solely in one specific county. Yeah, true. But there's many that you know, don't. You, like Prashna says, you get your produce from one part of the country, but then also with their finished products, mm -hmm. then, you know, Prashna and, and, and her team have to then send out those finished products through their distributorship channels. So what are some of the issues that, um, you know, are preoccupying your committee at, at, at Kepsa with respect to, uh, you know, I hate to call it that, but it seems that's what it is, cross-border trade <laughs> within the country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and that has been the, the major issue of concern uh, since uh, actually 2014-2015. Multiplicity of uh, levies, charges, fees, taxation, uh, double taxations between the national and the county government has been a critical issue. I remember it's something that we pushed through to the presidential round table um, and uh, the president in 2016 appointed the multi-agency task force to deal with the issues of multiplicity of charges and levies and double taxation issues within the na between the national and the county governments. So it's, it's, it's been a thorn on the, on the mm. flesh of the, all businesses mm -hmm. across, uh, across board. So until uh, that task force was formed, um, it, it went and collected uh, views it came up with an, you know, the own source revenue pol uh, policy that uh, was adopted by cabinet mm -hmm. and uh, a bill was formed to that regard. But that bill was solving the process bit. How do we, how do county governments uh, so, uh, levy charges, uh, fees and taxes uh, upon businesses? So the process uh, of it, but the real tax and, uh, you know, levies still, uh, still, uh, still, um, uh, continue. Yeah, so the process, Maki, is has not been solved just yet. Okay. Uh, as we speak today. Okay. Uh, and and we'll come back and talk about own source revenue because that's also yeah. a big thing for counties, exactly. removing their dependence from uh, you know the allocation that they get from the national um, uh, budget and, and resources that are allocated, you know, at that point. But so uh, Prashna, you talked about uh, you know getting your raw materials because you're sourcing potatoes from farmers you know in various parts of the country. So the raw material arrives here. Um, then your processing is done here in Nairobi, right? Yes. yes. So then, do you have to experience the same thing again now? The products that are coming to a Chandarana or a Ketias or a Magunas mm -hmm. for a delivery, and they're waiting. Um, so if we don't have that license, they're going to impound the goods and the vehicle. Mm. So that has been a big impact for us to the point where at some point we've decided, you know what, we might just use transporters. Okay, so where the vehicle is, is not branded in there, okay, okay, but that, uh, I, I can see, you know, where, where that would happen. Are you, talk to us about information that you receive from the counties, is that readily available? So, you know, when you are getting your products into County X, for instance, where do you get that information? Is that widely available? You know, like you get into the county and they say, right, Prashna and One Stop Enterprises, welcome. Um, here's a list of, you know, requirements. the requirements that, that are there. And then, you know, it's, it's easy for us to understand, follow, and then, you know, comply. It's actually not really that easily available. Sometimes the left hand doesn't know what the right hand wants. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you'll find one officer giving you this information, which is a third. Yet, when you meet an officer on the ground, <coughs> on the street, they have totally different information. Mm -hmm. So there's actually no sort of booklet out there national government or you know county wise for us to be able to say um you know these are the requirements for us in mombasa these are the requirements for us in kisubu mm -hmm. so you know it's sometimes we're shooting in the dark mm. a lot of time yeah and i heard you agreeing hillary yeah yeah, yeah, yeah she's very right mm -hmm. because uh, as as you speak uh, because most of the time uh, all those levies judges will be ideally presented in the finance act or finance uh, finance bill yeah. uh, for discussion and finance act and um, accessing that finance act in many counties you either um, from as low as uh, I think I saw Trukana is on charging like 300 shillings to print that the, the, that bill uh, to a thousand counties like Ikipia or Mombasa or others you even don't know yeah. so you just be taken circles yeah. 
again it's it's some some information it's 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 one thing that we are pushing through the ministry of devolution to have a, a portal a devolution portal where you'll have all these documentations all this uh, information uh, at at a one stop point mm -hmm. it's a is a process that uh, through the council of governors and the world bank the through the, and the ministry they were to develop that one stop uh, open uh, data oh, source Portal, really. Oh, portal, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that will have all that information. You know, a website, yeah, if exactly. you like. And you just yeah. click you down and you just click it and Download maybe it's a searchable, yeah. you know, database where it's control F and, you know, like KPI. <laughs> I don't, you know, yeah, anyway, maybe like that, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a bit simplistic about it, but it, it does seem like it was something that would be. It is fairly that simple. would be fairly simple to do, right? Yeah, but yeah, again, of, yeah. you see, because of its uh, erratic nature, changes, and as she says, yeah. uh, different officers are understanding different, totally different yeah. things. So you get, mm -hmm. you get, um, uh, the, 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 the counties are not so open to put this information up, in the, even in their own websites. Okay, yeah, yeah, even on their own websites, and and, and that's important to say. So, um, so let's talk about you know lobbying and perhaps uh, from the association, uh, the associations that you represent. Let's let's speak about that now. Um, you know, how helpful has that been? Is this a place where you can go and, you know, sort of put your ideas together and and say, okay, this is something I'm struggling with? And, and what's been the attempt? Let me, let me start with you, Prashna. I think CAM has been really good and changed over the years where, you know, now it's got its own SME and MSME sector. And um, we are basically able to call up any one of them or get them on WhatsApp and say, guys, what's going on? Or can you clarify this for us? You know, they're pretty prompt on email. They have, you know, people who are specific to head specific problems. So, if, mm -hmm. you know, if you've got a problem with KRA, it's X person. Mm -hmm. If it's a problem with KEBS, this is the person, this is the contact you have. Um, and they follow through. Mm -hmm. You know, with everything that usually happens is it gets to a point of conversation where sometimes that conversation just stops there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we hit roadblocks. Okay. Okay, and 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 that's um, that's interesting to hear. So we've we've heard your experience. We'll get to you, Hillary, in a moment. Uh, mm. But let's listen uh, now to other business uh, owners across the country. Like we said, it's about doing business in the counties. We've asked you this question on Twitter: What's your experience doing business in the counties? The hashtag is business now at Citizen TV Kenya at Yvonne Okwara. You can also send us a text message. The number is double two four double two. But we also went around. The country seeking the views of Kenyans. Let's start off with Nyeri County, a businessman, Wambogo Nyamu, on his experience doing business in the counties of Kenya. Since the evolution came, the ease of business has not doing business has not been good. Because for one, there is very high appetite for, for money from the county government. Land rates have shot up. In fact, we are forced to always be on in court. And the county government keeps on raising the, 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 the licenses and, and, the, and the land rates. And I think it's a time we, we started thinking of how some of these things should be mitigated. You can even see the water, the, 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 the amount of money we are paying for water. It, it's more than doubled. I don't know, maybe devolution brought a lot of money need, a very bloated government. Ease of business has not been, doing business has not been easy. KRI is forced to look for money. So KRI has really been pushing us. To an extent, sometimes you even feel like closing that business and forgetting about it. Because you can't rest. Mario, you are being called from Nanyuki. One department calls you from Nanyuki, another one from Nehru, another one from Nairobi. Wow. Uh, Prashna, that sounds similar to what you were saying, that even when you come to Nairobi, there's the Kenya Bureau of Standards that's here requiring yes. that, and then now the counties as well. Yes. Have you actually had to get certification from, yes, from the have. different counties? Yes. Okay. We must have food analysis certification from uh, every county government that we supply to. And then including the Kenya Bureau of Standards which is an here in Nairobi, one. which yes. is an annual one. Hillary, why would anyone, like, you know, Wambogo said, you know, sometimes you want to just close the business. And, and there was something interesting he said. He said, you know, with the coming of devolution, there's an increased appetite for money. Uh, that's true, because I think uh, county governments have been uh, forced to, uh, because of the erratic transfers from the national government, uh, they rely so uh, uh, often on their own source revenue to uh, fund their, you know, day-to-day -day operations. So they will get that 
uh, harassment yeah. and something that we are picked up with and even with the CRA and the council, uh, county government of uh, the, the council of governors it's in, in, in um, you know even to just transform the revenue officers you know uh, uh, soft skills communication skills mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. the way you approach you know uh, they forget, you know, that the, it's the businesses, uh, businesses that uh, pay their salaries, right. you know, that uh, help grow the economies at, uh, at local level. And if uh, they stifle the businesses, then they will not have the salary, you know, and the economy will not be growing. It's, 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 it's a circle. So uh, one, I think the, the multiplicity of licenses. It's one thing that um, Nairobi County, for instance, uh, you, when you're applying for a license, you, you're given a unified kind of license that, you know, that uh, takes into takes mm -hmm. care of uh, the, the single business permit, mm. the food um, mm -hmm. license, yes, uh, yes. The, the, uh, some of uh, quite a number of uh, licenses together, right. and so that's something that we are pushing across board, so that we have. Uh, and I think it's Senator, um, so one senator that uh, brought up a bill mm. uh, for unified licensing bill, so that we have a uniform license. You expect that you know uh, the charges that uh, I am being charged here in Nairobi mm -hmm. are the same ones that, uh, you know, are at least predictable. Okay. But uh, you can imagine that uh, while you'll be paying uh, 50 shillings in Narok, yeah. you will be paying uh, 4,000 shillings in County X mm -hmm. and another 3,500 shillings in yeah. County X. Right. So in terms of uniformity of uh, levies across the country, uh, we, we lack a standardized way of, uh, you know, getting that uh, the, those fees and levies uh, Okay, and the speaking of, of, of pushing through and, and, and the engagements that are there uh, for this to happen. So I would imagine uniformity of that would need to be something that all of the counties are discussing. Now, you know, all of this legislation, the taxation policies, um, are, you know, laws are made at, at the assemblies, the yes. county assemblies. Mm -hmm. Has there been any engagement with, with the county assemblies? Maybe even through the county assemblies forum where you can have that standardization across the board. And maybe they might argue that, you know, Narok's needs are very different. In any case, Narok, I think, with their own source revenue, especially from the Masai Mara, uh, you Park. know, national park and the reserve, you know, they're doing a little bit better yes, than sir. you know others that don't have some of those you know natural resources. But um, has there been any attempt to engage at the county assembly level because that is where the laws are made and passed? Exactly, but uh, we need to start at the national level okay. because, like, if you don't have that uh, uniformity at the national level, mm -hmm. then engaging specific counties will be, you know, an excess in futility. Mm -hmm. Because every every the assemblies will tell you that the executive wants the funds okay. because if the the executive doesn't have the funds, the assembly will not get their share. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a very tight balance that uh, we need a national discussion about the yeah. same. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're glad I think that this discussion happening at the Senate level and the National Assembly mm -hmm. and uh, through the Ministry of Devolution, uh, through the uh, devolution policy. Mm -hmm. So that we have a standardized way uh, and a predictable way in that matter. Uh, that uh, levies, fees, and charges are, are, are understandable. Okay. And, co and you know, and commiserate service uh, right. that, uh, that yes. uh, relate to those uh, levies and charges here. Yeah. Absolutely, services, and that's, that's a good one to pick up on. So, you know, you're paying, uh, the cess, the levies, the taxation, you're getting uh, you know, your food uh, certified yeah. in, in the various counties. What's the sort of service you get back from those counties, Prashna? We actually get back no service. There's absolutely no service. For example, you know, we've got to have um, our own garbage collected. Mm. You know? So you know, when you look at the amount that you're paying and the service that you're getting back, mm. I'm not saying that there is absolutely no service. I mean, obviously, your roads are maintained, your all that is being done, right? Um, whether that's being done by national government or county government, uh, it varies from place to place. Um, but I mean, I'll give you an example. Right outside where our factory is, it was supposed to have, there was a matata stop. And it was supposed to have been moved mm -hmm. when this development yeah. was done. Yeah. But they refuse to move. All right, and, and now, that affects your business. Correct, okay. because How it so? affects uh, you know it affects us getting in and out of the you know our warehousing. Yeah, it affects um, containers coming in and out. You know, you've got constant insecurity because you don't know. I mean, mm. some of them are good. Yeah, and and now we've learned who are the residents mm. in the area. Mm. 
but some people you don't know where they're yeah. coming in from. Yeah, and that is actually the county government's responsibility Correct. to ensure that everybody is able to do business um, from you know the ones who are running the matatu business to you who's doing you know agri business and to everybody you know in a space where none inconveniences the other as, 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 it, as it were okay um, so I'm seeing quite a bit of your feedback I will get to that uh, Vincent I see your tweet Laban I see your tweet as well uh, doing business in the counties I will get to your tweets and messages in a while but it's um, looking like it is difficult but let's listen to one more businessman right here on the program on their experience with doing business in the county I believe Samuel Mugo is next Na mimi kazi yangu ninauza vitu za car accessories wakati devolution ilikuja All right, we'll get back to Samuel Mugo in a moment. Um, he's talking about selling a car accessory parts, and we'll get to hear his experience on the same. Um, and, you know, we'll just get those tweets up uh, as well. So uh, just to also talk about uh, the own source revenue now, um, Hilary, for, for those who might not understand what that is, maybe we can just explain it in a very simple way and then to see how that relates to, uh, you know, doing business in the counties and ways in which it might be designed to help, but also ways in which some might feel it's exploitative. Well, um, you know, as uh, the governments need to run to pay the salaries for the civil servants and to provide the services that they're providing to the Monainchi, and uh, therefore the constitution uh, allocated uh, specific sources where the national government should, shall collect uh, revenues from. Uh, majorly through the, uh, the various tax heads, the income tax, the, the VAT, and uh, you know the, the, the kind of uh, taxes that KRA collects, mm -hmm. and allocated some portion to the county governments to do uh, that uh, they will uh, raise the revenues from, including property rates. Um, so the property rates, you know, advertisement, uh, land rates, and um, as such sources, yeah? In the counties. At uh, the so counties so. specifically. Right. So the counties are limited as to the extent of sources they will collect revenues from. Mm -hmm. So it, that's why you'll get uh, it through the licensing and, uh, and the kinds of services they provide uh, to the Monainchi through the property rates and levies that uh, they will, uh, the, the people who operate in the county will, uh, will, will grant and through the advertising and, uh, you know, uh, and, and such services, okay. licensing, uh, health facilities right. uh, in, a, in line with the devolved functions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so um, how would this help? How could it possibly hurt? Um, those who want to do business in the various counties or what's the aim of it you know besides you know of course having counties making sure that they're also collecting their own revenue and mm -hmm. not solely dependent on the allocation from the national um, revenue but take us through why this is important and how this could affect Prashna and many others who are doing business uh, in the counties so it's important because uh, county governments provide those services, specific services uh, to, to, to Wanaiji in terms of land rates and others because they have to create roads and uh, feeder services uh, to, that uh, will benefit Wanaiji that will be for the common good. Uh, so says because ideally, uh, you know, farmers are not us. So to, mm -hmm. to, for a specific, uh, to, to provide the necessary infrastructure for uh, farmers to access the market and uh, the, the, you know, the buyers to access the farmers uh, produce, the county governments, and that's why there's that, you know, classification mm -hmm. and the kind of uh, roads, huh? roads that yes. the county government shall maintain, mm -hmm. the ones that the national governments are going to maintain. So the ones that uh, the gov county governments shall maintain are, uh, you know, serviced through the kind of uh, levies that they put. Yeah. And uh, to provide water, to provide, you know, garbage collections. So for, for them to offer those services, they will be charging businesses because they are direct beneficiaries. Mm. Uh, but um, um, if it took a ground, may not be, <laughs> true. may not be true. Uh -huh. So they may be collecting, but uh, paying themselves the salaries, but not providing the services that uh, mm -hmm. they generally ought to, to provide. So if they are charging, uh, you know, let's say uh, car park fees, okay. uh, you know, the, uh, the parking fees. Yes. You know, uh, the law provides that they need to have designated those parking areas. 
marking clearly that you know these are the number of parking spaces we have in the country in the county mm -hmm. yeah and you know you'll be you'll be paying this from these hours to, to these hours right. so it's clear so because you're paying for those parking fees it's, it's a, you you are using to pay and you're using you're paying for the services that you'll be using uh -huh. uh, parking for instance right. or markets market so uh, you fees. expect uh, you know certain things in return like exactly you say, the clear yeah. demarcation of parking spaces yes. if you are in a marketplace and you're paying um, this says every day I think some of them pay between 20 and 50 shillings yes, per day, depending, right? on, the, yeah. depending on, on on the county so you expect you know garbage collection a clean environment exactly. in which um, you know the traders can lay down their wares and be able to sell as opposed to then coming uh, you know in the morning and finding all of yesterday's garbage and having to start to yeah. clean that up yourself. And you have to clean yourself. Yeah. You do, yeah. And I, I've mm. seen in, in most places the traders come up, you know, with their own little association mm -hmm. and then they start to, you know, how much will we pay to make sure our garbage is collected? collected. You know, like yeah. you said. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that, that becomes an issue. We're about to take a break, but I, I want to understand, um, I don't know if you're able to give us some sort of percentage of, um, of how much all of these things, you know, cost you or or maybe contribute to the cost of the product you know is it does it account for 20 percent you said some of it you absorb but you know you can't absorb you know ev every single cost and you pass that on you know to what extent does that affect the cost of production you know if you're able to give us just a an overview okay. so when we're working on our cost of goods and cost of production we must take into account all our licenses and that is across county so sometimes you can look at 5 to 7 percent, sometimes it goes up to even 11. Wow. Yeah, and, and, and some or most of that would be passed to, to the consumer. Some is passed, yes. Some is passed, and, and that affects your competitiveness, no? Correct. Yeah, so yeah. you're you know, in the market and you've got... And in a price-sensitive market. And in, the price, in a price-sensitive market that is also open to importation, mm -hmm. correct? So you, know, you have all of these products that are from every Everywhere. part of the world. Um, and and how does how do you think then that affects your competitiveness with with all of these other products that are so generally on the cost shelf? of production and manufacturing in Kenya is very high. I mean, we're not only talking about you know devolution. Look at our electricity bills, right? For me, for example, if I was to consider going off grid and to go solar, mm. it would cost us a lot to be able to you know boost our machines with solar. Mm -hmm. So we are dependent on electricity. So generally, cost of production is a lot more expensive compared to when you produce out of the country. Um, and sometimes out of the country is just as far as Tanzania. OK. Yeah, wow. The wow. cost of production is a little bit cheaper than doing production in Kenya. And you've seen some big factories have moved to Uganda and Tanzania purely because of that. Yeah. You'd rather pay excise and, and pay KRA duties to bring your goods back and sell them in Kenya because that makes you a lot more competitive. Wow, okay, interesting. On that note, uh, let's take a, a quick break here on the program. Talking about doing business in the counties. So what has that experience been like? When we come back, more from my guests, including our Made in Kenya segment today. Um, have you been looking for phone charging cables um, and you think you can only get the important ones? Well, you know, there's a Kenyan who's making them right here. That is on our Made in Kenya segment. But then when we come back, we'll conclude with my guests and I'll also be taking a look at some of your tweets to hear your experiences on doing business in the counties across Kenya, all 47 of them, including the national government, making them 48. We call them independent, but, um, you know, still part of the whole national um, exercise. Is it a border stop kind of thing? Let us know. The hashtag is business now at Citizen TV Kenya at Yvonne Okwara back in a moment. Welcome back. This is Business Now. We're talking about doing business in the counties. Now, we know that the Devolution Conference uh, was postponed due to COVID-19 uh, challenges, but it's still always a good time to talk about devolution in the country. From 2013, when it was finally actualized following the promulgation of the 2010 Constitution, up until today, what has the experience been like? Please continue to send us your feedback. We're asking you on what your experience has 
has been and continues to be with doing business in the counties. The hashtag is business now at Citizen TV Kenya at Yvonne Okwara. My guests here from uh, the Kenya Association of Manufacturers and the Kenya Private Sector Alliance giving us their experiences and their attempts at uh, you know trying to make sure that the business environment continues to be more conducive and talking to us about uh, their challenges, uh, some of the successes, experiences across the board. We'll come back to them for our final thoughts in just a moment. But let's hear from one more business person, Samuel Mugo, who will now tell us his experiences. Uh, I believe he sells car accessory parts. This is Samuel. Listen. I was young and I was able to use car accessories. When the devolution was coming, and when the municipality was coming, when the people at least to do their jobs, they were able to do their jobs because the governor was accessible. Wakati ule wa municipality mambo ilikuwa ngumu kidogo lakini pesa ndio hakuna saa hii ukilinganisha na wakati ule hata kama biashara ziko rahisi kufanya biashara ziko shini hata mkifanya supply kwa governor ama kwa government a uh, mambo ya kulipwa ina delay Wana, wanasema si covid pesa zimeenda kwa covid all right, so um, talking about doing business in the county and doing business with the county as well, saying yeah, it might be a little easier, you might have you know, more access to uh, those individuals within the counties, but you know, uh, things are a little tough. So I guess it's, it's a bit of a mixed bag though, uh, isn't it? I'd like to now get uh, your closing thoughts. I'll start with you, Hilary, on uh, you know, where we go from here. I know we're talking about a round table, um, but you know, we have uh, institutions uh, or, or, or shall we say organizations like IBEC and that are supposed to sort of you know speak to all of this cooperation between the 47 national governments and the one uh, you know national um, so lobbying again to what how much more lobbying do we need to do who do we need to be speaking to as well and um, if you are at that round table right now let's imagine that this is it what exactly would be your recommendations I think one we have done very well with the ease of doing business. We are number 56 across the world. Yeah, but I think we need to now focus on uh, the ease of doing business at the county level and the cost of doing business at the county level, because uh, we need to really understand that uh, you know for us to grow, for us to you know develop and achieve our vision 2030, we need to build our businesses. Uh, keep saying that government has no business doing business. Le leave it to the private sector. To, because they are the engine, uh, the drivers of growth, uh, so to speak. Secondly, I think uh, for the National Assembly needs to pass the county-owned source revenue process bill. That one will have solved one critical thing for us as, as, as businesses, making it predictable for businesses, knowing that next year I'll be able to, this uh, what uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be needed to pay uh, for, uh, for me to operate. It makes it a little easier uh, for, uh, instead of being subjected to, you know, uh, you know, the next or one month from now, you need to pay this mm. or you close down your shop. Yeah. Uh, thirdly, I think we need to uh, address the multiplicity um, and uh, duplicity of charges. The quite, we have quite so many, uh, you know, parastatals, you know, uh, so many regulators in the, in the country regulating this or not, uh, that. If you think you are complied today with this and this and this sets of regulation, tomorrow, believe you me, someone else will come and say you've not paid this, you're not, you don't have this uh, form of license. I think what businesses need is just uh, an easy, conducive environment and uh, they can do that from one uh, the one stop shop that uh, uh, Ram was uh, suggesting here before that we just need you know information and one stop uh, shop that will be able to help sort all these uh, forms of uh, charges huduma center very good we have received uh, awards for that uh, uh, that regard we now need huduma center for county governments mm -hmm. uh, that uh, will have all sorts of information one stop uh, that uh, if you if you uh, come from uh, anywhere you go into a county x you know i'll walk into here and i'll get all the information i need to set up the business to run the business at the cross the year and uh, i think we'll be much ahead if we do that as we prepare for the african free trade area and you know and every the regional business uh, regional uh, form of trading and uh, the, the, a closer group because as you say the world has become a global village 
So we need not have those, you know, cross county yeah. and cross border, <laughs> what you call cross border kind of limitations in the businesses. Thank you. Okay. And speaking of one stop, um, the sea of one stop enterprises, <laughs> perhaps <laughs> they should take a leap from that um, with respect to that. Uh, so we're at this round table and um, your recommendations would be what, Prashna? Pretty much similar to what Hillary says, just give us information that is valid and correct, that enables us to plan what we need to do, that enables us to budget for what we need to do. Um, you know, these double taxations, triple taxations, let's just get rid of them. If we're paying the national government, let the national government take that money and decide what they want to do with it. I don't want to go to Kisumu and have to pay for X and then go to Mombasa and pay for it again. It's, it's pointless. You know, it, it, it hurts business, it hurts the consumer at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and the one-stop area of where, you know, I'm going to go in and at the click of a button, I've got a license and that license allows me to operate in the entire country, whether it's in Wajir or whether it's in um, Mombasa. Right. Um, and, you know, like you said, you know, you have to get your food certified by KEBS and then you have to get it certified at the county. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And KEBS is sort of the national, uh, you know, standards body that, you know, would Correct. assume that and don't standards forget. Are, yeah. are not just national standards, but are international, international best standards. practices. Yeah. So why would then, you know, another want, want, want something different? And then sometimes we also have to get our food products by an independent lab. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yes, absolutely. So anyway, like you said, one including stop soil point, testing, you know, including yes. soil testing. <laughs> there you go. So it, it becomes, um, you know, quite difficult. Are you still going to continue doing business in Kenya, even with the challenges we've got? By all means, we've been here 40 years. We're not going anywhere. OK, happy birthday, by the way. That's what at the end of this month at the end of. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. 40 thank years you. doing business is, is no small feat. Thank you very right. much uh, for thank your you. time. And thank you, Hillary, as well. Thank and you wish you all the best with that. We'll get to some more feedback uh, that we're getting on Twitter on this discussion in just a moment. But first, to our Made in Kenya series that now airs every Monday right here on Business Now. Phone charging cables, mainly imported into Kenya, with over 40 million pieces of smartphones in the country. This makes for a lucrative segment. Anthony Muthungu, based in Kirinyaga County, saw this opportunity and is today producing Kenyan-made phone charging cables. Edward Chwea caught up with him and filed this report. Kagio, Kirinyaga County. A venture that is likely to turn the tables sits along the busy Sagana Nyeri Road. Interestingly, this innovation, probably the only one, if not a few in Kenya, is credited to the coronavirus pandemic that has continued to ravage the globe. At just 27 years of age, Anthony Mudungu is the brainchild behind Totosai Holdings, a company that specializes in manufacturing mobile phone cables. It started back in March 2020. I had six USB cables, but my supplies, none was working. So I checked my friends on Facebook, asking them if you have a USB cable that's not working. Within two weeks, I had more than 5,000 USB cables that are damaged. I documented one cable, one, one at a time. I picked a pattern, and then I said, now probably I'm going to build a cable that is much way better than these 5,000 damaged cables. I have a strong background of physics and computer engineering. The first thing is to, to have the four-core cable wire, which is normally sourced in, uh, in a lobby. Next is cable cutting and stripping. Then we do cable soldering. From there, then we do internal injection. We do virtual inspection. From virtual inspection, we do testing. Then goes back now to packaging, widening, and then we finish with the recycling because we have a lot of waste after every injection process. While the local market is flooded with imported cables due to the ever-growing number of mobile phone users in Kenya, Mudungu says Kenyans are gradually accepting his products due to quality, and these has in turn enabled him to employ others and support community projects. 
Good day we can produce between 300 500 pieces. There are, there are even times that we can sell 500 pieces per day to one person. And we normally sell them to a distributor. These cables are made of high quality materials and we guarantee customers six months warranty. Our micro, we normally produce at 120 shillings, VAT inclusive. Type C, 150 shillings, VAT inclusive. And iPhone, at 180 shillings, VAT inclusive. We are the one who market ourselves. And uh, we only do this by building a quality product. And we have also been trying to do some kind of social media marketing of our products. For now, I have five, five employees and most of them are engineers. Despite his venture attracting support from many Kenyans, among them Kirinyaga Governor Ann Waiguru, Mudungu believes a lot more needs to be done to support local manufacturers. It's high taxation because as a company, one year old, I'm paying VAT 16%, like a company that is 50 years old. And also cost of learning business, electricity is high, and lack of flood the business environment in this country. So everyone is failing to start a business because the business environment is not friendly to manufacturers and young entrepreneurs. Going forward, Mudungu has his mind and thoughts cast wide, even as he looks to venture into more products, among them phone chargers and eventually mobile phones. Our product has the name of our company at the back, and it has the map of Kenya at the back, signifying it's a made in Kenya product. Edward Chwea, Business Now, Citizen TV. And I'm very sure those who have iPhones were very happy to hear that the cost of production of an iPhone cable is obviously more costly uh, than, uh, but than those others. Uh, you know yourselves. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but listen, this this is amazing, and you know we have it here. And, and just to, to show you, remember when we launched this series, we talked about the Made in Kenya initiative that's being done uh, by Brand Kenya. This is one of their 139, I believe, adoptees of of that. And you know they go through a certification process where they take a look at the source of materials, the number of workers, you know, just making sure that it's all local. So this is a made in Kenya product. So, uh, you know, interesting to see Kenyans doing some great things around and exactly they're doing business in the counties. So that just ties into the discussion we're having today. We have our made in Kenya series every week here on the program. So again, if you'd like to get in touch with us, you have a business and you think uh, you want us to cover that, we'd be happy to. At Citizen TV Kenya, at Yvonne Okwara, use the hashtag business now and made in Kenya. We'll get that. And who knows, we could be featuring your business here on the program. So today, like I said, we've been talking about uh, doing business in the counties. What's your experience been? We've been asking for your feedback. Let's take a look at some of that now. A couple of tweets uh, that you've sent in to us here today. Let's start with this one from Vincent Awange saying, can Kepsa lobby the government of Kenya to sort out these double, triple taxations? It hurts business. So the, that's uh, definitely something we've been talking about here today. Laban Mathai says, it is still hard to transport food, for example, potatoes. Um, I think you mean across counties. Levies are still extortionist. Uh, Joanna Chebi says licensing and permits should be standardized to avoid unfair business practices. I had to close my restaurant just because of this. Thanks for this program. I'm sorry about that, Joanna. Um, Eric Rono says a lot of roadblocks to access counties has necessitated the payment of CES. Ministry of Trade needs to up their game. So those are your views. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry you had to close your business. That's never a good thing to hear. Uh, you know, we always hope uh, to give you information that makes sure we thrive, uh, you thrive in your businesses. And that's what this show is all about. Uh, the MSME sector, we're focused on small businesses. What are your issues, your challenges, celebrating your successes as well and giving you the information you need to keep your businesses alive and running. You are the engine that drives the economy of this nation. And that's what we do here on the show every day. We celebrate you. I'd like to say many thanks 
thanks to my guests Hilary Yonami and Prashna Shah. Happy birthday to One Stop uh, Enterprises um, to another 40. And, and, you know, another 40 and, and another 40. <laughs> it's always good to hear about Kenyan businesses that, you know, stand the test of time. Um, so congratulations and thank you as well. We look forward to that lobbying. All right, so that's it for our show. We'll see you again next week. We will be featuring another business that is made in Kenya. But until then, thanks for watching. Stay profitable. God bless you and your business. My name is Yvonne Okwara Matole. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.